Let's continue now where we left off in the previous video by looking at some additional extrusion tools and techniques. I'm going to select the same object again by hitting the H key and then I'll hold down the Alt key and click on the visibility icon. I'll zoom in. What we want to do is look at tools like the Pose tool and Vox Extrude and Vox Layer as options for creating specific extrusions from a surface. So let's choose the pose tool first and that's in the adjust section right here. The primary benefit of using the pose tool is that in the tool options panel you can choose paint select and use brush alphas to create a selected area that you can utilize a transform gizmo or freeform lattice on to perform some advanced transform operations. Let's go ahead and let's choose this one. And I'll use the paint with dabs again. And I'll just click here. When I see the selection stretch like that, that tells me that this object must be stretched somehow. That can happen anytime you are extruding along a given axis and oftentimes you'll see a little warning down here but I'm going to right click on the layer and choose to global space and that will kind of reset it. I'm also going to hide the gizmo until after I make the selection. Now when I click it's more uniform. So let's go ahead and unhide the gizmo and make a transform. If you want, you can further manipulate the selected area with the freeform lattice option that's built into this tool. You could also switch to another selection mode while using this tool. Let's clear the selection and I'll choose the line select mode. I'm going to scale it in. So let's clear the selection. And that's fairly rough. So we definitely would want to dynamically subdivide this given area. When we are in surface mode, we have a few different tools that allow us to do that. Live clay brushes are one option. They allow you to sculpt and tessellate simultaneously. But if you set the depth value to zero, it will only tessellate underneath your brush. You can adjust the detail level here in the tool options panel. The default value is set at three, but your brush size also dictates the resolution level. The larger the brush, the higher your detail value here needs to be, because whenever you scale your brush down, it's going to tessellate more and more and more and more as you reduce your brush size. The larger your brush, the less it's going to tessellate. So let's set our depth level. We can also right click and drag up and down so we don't have to go up here. And let me choose the pan with damps. There we go. Now let's turn wireframe on. And you can see what it did. It basically subdivided everything inside the brush radius and it performed the extrusion. However, if we reduce our depth value to zero, then when we click or brush, it's only going to subdivide. So let me point out one other thing while I'm here in live clay. If you want to do this on the fly without having to switch tools, there is a way to do that. So if I, let's say, wanted to use absolute, we can go to our shift action menus here whenever we're in surface mode and we can choose the smoothing type, but we also have an option for adding detail just like this. So you can choose extra detail and it's relative to your brush size as well. So I need to reduce my brush size. Now that that's done, let's bring our brush size down. So yeah, on the fly, you can dynamically subdivide. Another option is to use a subdivide tool. And what this will do is it will make a free selection. 
and it has a highlighted boundary. And you can choose to apply the subdivision to the frozen area, everything outside the frozen area, or the entire object, and then just hit apply. Okay, and I'll hit apply one more time so it's really dense. And let's clear the selection. Let's try another tool, and that is the Vox Extrude and Vox Layer. So with Vox Extrude, it's just going to extrude from the surface. And let's choose this. If I make that outside of this area, you can see how rough it is. You do have an option to smooth it here. One is the max. Uh, you probably could go above that though. But we'll put it back at 0.7 and undo. Now we have the offset, and this is how much it's going to extrude from the surface and the smoothing degree we already looked at. You could invert the selection. We can flatten the end if we want. I will turn that off. Let's go ahead and hit apply. So with the smoothing and with the dynamic tessellation, we get a fairly good result. So let's turn the wireframe back off. Yeah, looks pretty good. So Vox layer is quite similar, except the difference is rather than extruding from the surface of the same object, it's going to create a new object on top of the surface. Now it doesn't have to necessarily be on top of the surface. You could use this layer offset to make it extrude into the surface if you want using a negative value. Thickness is basically the same thing as offset with Vox Extrude. So with the selection made, you do have some options to make it a voxel object or surface mode object and border style. You, know, you can choose straight around extrude direction, vertex normal, average normal, or along a specific axis. So let's go ahead and hit apply. And it creates a new layer and places that object on that new layer. Let's turn wireframe off. We probably want to smooth that if we want to keep it. So we can scroll to the bottom, choose smooth all, relaxation, probably want to increase the smoothing degree quite a bit so that we don't have to keep coming back to this dialog each time we iterate. There we go. So let's clear this selection by hitting control D or we could choose the clear selection button. So let's say you got an extrusion and it's a bit rough for whatever reason and you want to smooth just this area but not everything else and you know using a brush is okay but you just want to do everything in one fell swoop. What you can do is let's switch to a brush like that and I would highly recommend assigning a hotkey to the freeze tool so you can quickly access it. So let's choose another tool I want to show. You can hold down that hotkey and brush that particular area. First, I need to make sure I'm on the right layer. Let's hold down our hotkey for the freeze tool. So I'll just rotate about. Instead of scrolling to the bottom to hit smooth all, I'll just hit the space bar and I can click here. Now I want to smooth what I have selected. When you invert, then it does affect only the selection. So that's what we want. Okay, okay. So that's probably a little bit too smooth. Let's go ahead and undo and smooth all again. And let's reduce our smoothing degree. Okay, there we go. It's a little bit better. And uh, Control-D to deselect. If you forget the hotkey, it's easy to remember in Photoshop, Control D is a universal deselect keyboard combination. And uh, you can also go to the freeze menu if you want to unfreeze all.